السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أنا علي الغزالي وأهلا وسهلا بكم في اللسان Today inshallah we delve into a new chapter the fourth chapter as you can see on the screen I have the chapter open it says here الوحدة الرابعة the fourth chapter titled الحياة اليومية the word Haya here means life, all right? And the opposite of that is the word mot. So mot means death and haya means life. And we covered before the adjectives hay, which means alive or living. And the opposite of it is mayit, which means dead. So hay and mayit are adjectives. Al haya and al mot are the nouns life and death. And then the word yawmiyah is derived from the word yawm here. So the word yawm means a day. And if I add that ya to it with a shadda, it turns into an adjective. So it becomes daily. So al hayatul yawmiyah means the daily life. This is going to be the topic for our chapter, inshallah. So um, scroll down to the next page where we have the first hiwar this is by the way page number 82 in the uh, book uh, and this hiwar is between Tariq and Tahir as usual I'm gonna start reading the uh, hiwar for you متى تستيقظ استيقظ عند الفجر أين تصلي الفجر أصلي الفجر في المسجد هل تنام بعد الصلاة؟ لا، لا أنام بعد الصلاة. ماذا تفعل بعد الصلاة؟ أقرأ القرآن. ومتى تذهب إلى المدرسة؟ أذهب الساعة السابعة. هل تذهب بالسيارة؟ لا، أذهب بالحافلة. All right, now let's try to understand what's going on in this hiwar. So, um, Tariq began the hiwar with a question. Mata tastayqidu? Of course, mata means when, and the verb tastayqidu is a new verb for us, and it's basically the opposite of the verb yanamu, which we covered in a previous video. So, if yanamu means to sleep, then yastayqidu means to wake up. So, mata tastayqidu? When do you wake up? So Tahir answered, Astayqidu, and he began the verb with a because he's talking about himself. Astayqidu, I wake up, Inda al Fajr. Now, what does Inda mean? The word Inda means at, at Fajr, not before, not after. And if you want to say before in the Arabic language, then we say Qabla. So Qabla means before. And if you want to say after, then we say ba'da. So qabla is before, ba'da is after, and inda means at. Astayqidu inda al fajr. And then Tariq goes, Aina tu salli al fajr? Aina, where do you pray to salli al fajr? He said, O salli al fajr fil masjidi in the mosque. Okay, this is easy. And then he asked him a yes or no question. هل تنام بعد الصلاة? Do you sleep after صلاة? He said لا لا أنام بعد الصلاة. So we have two لاز here. The first لا means no. And this is the answer to the question هل تنام بعد الصلاة? And then he continued to say لا أنام which means I don't sleep after صلاة. So if I want to negate the present verb or the مضارع I just simply add a la before it. So if I say, um, uh, if I say aqra'u means I read or I'm reading. La aqra'u, that means I don't read. Anamu, la anamu. Astayqidu, la astayqidu. Adkhulu, la adkhulu. I enter, I don't enter. And so on. La anamu ba'da as-salat. I do not sleep after ba'da as-salati. And then Tariq asks another question. ماذا تفعل بعد الصلاة؟ We said ماذا means what and the verb تفعل 
is the verb to do. So, what do you do? بعد الصلاة after صلاة طارق goes أقرأ القرآن I read Quran. And then طارق asks again ومتى تذهب إلى المدرسة and when do you when do you go to school? So the verb تذهب means to go. أذهب means I go. أنت تذهب أنت تذهبين هو يذهب هي تذهب and so on. متى تذهب when do you go to المدرسة and of course we said before المدرسة is school so when do you go to school and then Tahra answered أذهب I go الساعة السابعة now the word ساعة means hour and it could also be used to refer to a clock or a watch but in this context it means Hour. So I go, I go to school. الساعة السابعة. The adjective سابعة means seventh. Of course, we covered the numbers uh, from one to ten. واحد اثنان ثلاثة أربعة خمسة ستة سبعة. So سبعة means seven, but سابعة means seventh, right? So الساعة السابعة. That literally translates to the seventh hour. And this is our way of saying seven o'clock. So الساعة السابعة that means seven o'clock. And then Tariq goes هل تذهب بالسيارة? And what does سيارة mean? It means, as you can see in the picture, a car. And then he answered لا no. أذهب بالحافلة. I go B. The word B means by. So I go by حافلة. And hafila means a bus. So he doesn't go by the sayara, he takes the hafila, he takes the bus. And that is it for this dialogue. Now, of course, I added the new words on the side here as usual. We said ba'da means after, inda means at, qabla means before. The verb yastayqidu means to wake up, yanamu, the opposite to sleep, yadhabu means to go. And then we've said the word ساعه means an hour or a clock or a watch. And of course the word sayara is a car, the word hafila is a bus. And when it comes to the time, we said um, we don't use the normal numbers واحد, اثنان, ثلاثة, أربعة, خمسة. We tend to use first, second, third. All right? So if I want to say one o'clock, we say in Arabic الساعة الواحدة. And then الساعة الثانية for, for two o'clock. And then الساعة الثالثة, three o'clock. الساعة الرابعة, الخامسة. You can see the pattern uh, here. Uh, الخامسة, السادسة, السابعة, الثامنة, التاسعة, العاشرة, uh, ten o'clock. الحادية عشرة, الثانية عشرة. And inshallah, uh, maybe in the next video, we will uh, learn how to say, uh, you know, quarter past and quarter two, half past and, and how to be more uh, precise when telling the time. But for now, just try and memorize uh, these so that, uh, inshallah, um, you are able to tell the time in Arabic easily. Now that is it for the first dialogue of the uh, chapter. Let's move on. Of course, we, ha we have an exercise here. Uh, please do it if you can. It's not difficult. It's basically uh, these are questions that you should answer uh, to test your comprehension of what we just learned or of the uh, paragraph uh, or the dialogue that we just learned. Now, if we scroll down to the next hiwar, we have this uh, hiwar between the family members Al Um, Al Ab, the father and the mother, uh, and Tariq, Fatima, Ahmed, and so on. Uh, so listen carefully as I read. هذا يوم العطلة. هذا يوم العمل. ماذا ستفعل يا طارق؟ سأكنس غرفة الجلوس. وماذا ستفعلين يا فاطمة؟ سأكنس غرفة النوم. وماذا ستفعل يا أحمد؟ سأغسل الملابس. وماذا ستفعلين يا لطيفة؟ سأكوي الملابس 
أنا سأغسل الأطباق وأنا سأقرأ القرآن Now let's uh, go through it again الأم starts by saying هذا يوم العطلة This is the day of عطلة Now what does عطلة mean? عطلة means the day off Holiday No school, no work هذا يوم العطلة And then the father says هذا يوم العمل The word عمل is the opposite of عطلة Right, so عطلة means no work or off, day off And عمل means work All right So يوم العمل, the day of work So um, the mother goes, الأم ماذا ستفعل يا طارق We said just a few minutes ago that the verb تفعل means to do And سا here at the beginning is the future سا If you recall we covered it before So ماذا ستفعل What are you going to be doing يا طارق So طارق goes سا Again I will أكنس Now what does the verb أكنس mean? أكنس means to to sweep or to hoover, vacuum clean. So he's saying, I will hoover غرفة الجلوس. Uh, of course, we covered that before, the sitting room غرفة الجلوس. And then the mother goes, وماذا ستفعلين يا فاطمة? Notice when the mother was addressing the son, طارق, she said, تفعلوا. But when she's addressing فاطمة, the female, she said, تفعلين. The ina is for the female. If you are addressing her, ماذا ستفعلين يا فاطمة? What are you going to be doing? So Fatima said, سأكنس again to sweep or hoover غرفة النوم, the bedroom, and then the mother continues to ask, وماذا ستفعل يا أحمد? And what are you going to do, Ahmed? He said, سأغسل الملابس. Now the verb أغسل أو يغسل means to wash. So he said, I'm going to wash the Malabis, and of course the word malabis means clothes. These are my malabis. Malabisi. And then Al-Um goes, وَمَاذَا سَتَفْعَلِينَ يَا لَطِيفَةِ Latifa answers, سَأَكْوِي malabis. So what do you do after you wash the malabis? And you dry the malabis? After that, of course, you... Iron them, right? So the verb yakwi or akwi means iron. So akwi, I will iron the malabis. And then the jadda, which means grandmother, of course. The grandmother says, Ana sa'agsilu. Again, agsilu is wash. Sa'agsilu al atbaq, which means dishes. She will wash the dishes. And then the grandfather, he. He has nothing else to do, so he said, "Ana سَأَقْرَأُ Quran. I will be reading Quran. So this is, uh, this is the second dialogue. Alhamdulillah, we covered it. I hope I made it clear for you. And as usual, I added the words, the new words on the site for us to review them quickly. So we said before, يَوْم means a day. And the jama' for that, the plural, is ayam. So yawm, one day, ayam is days. And al-amal is work, al-utla, the opposite is day off or holiday. And then we have a bunch of verbs here. We have the verb ya'malu, which means to work. Could also mean to do. Uh, so it could be uh, synonymous to the verb yaf'alu. So ya'malu and yaf'alu can be used interchangeably uh, to do. Um, and then yaknusu. As well, we said means to sweep if you're using a broom, and to hoover if you use if you're using a vacuum cleaner. Yaknusu, uh, and then yagsilu we said to wash, and of course the verb yakwi is to iron. And since we studied a few important uh, verbs such as yaknusu, yagsilu, yakwi, I thought I'd add some uh, relating uh, words such as the word miknasa which means a, a broom or a hoover. And of course, mirsala, which means a washing machine. In Egypt, however, we use another uh, word for that. We tend to use the word ghassala, which is uh, not uh, wrong. Yani you can say mirsala or you can say 
غسالة both are correct and of course the word mikwa means iron so miknasa mirsala and mikwa and then of course at the end we learned the word malabis which means clothes and tabak is a dish and atbaq is the jama for it dishes that should be it for today's video i hope you've benefited and if you have any questions or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and i have been ali al ghazali and i'll be speaking to you very soon assalamu alaikum